nerd on the internet, like me, you're probably excited about the nearing possible future of living in a self-driving car utopia. For the uninitiated, self-driving car technology has been real hot as of late, and most major car companies are working on it in some form or another. Google is probably most famous for its self-driving cars, which can occasionally be seen on the streets of San Francisco. driver this car. Since 2013, four states in the US have approved the use of self-driving cars for testing purposes, including California, Nevada, Michigan, and Florida. The ultimate idea is that if all the cars on the road are robotic self-driving cars, that they'd be able to communicate with each other better than humans can, preventing more accidents and increasing driving efficiency. But we're pretty far from that, both from a regulatory standpoint, but also from a technology one. In the summer of 2015, Tesla released a software update for its Model S, which granted them autopilot, meaning they could drive on the highway by themselves, change lanes, match speed, and also parallel park for you. A feature that is the most commonly found of the self-driving car genre these days. Soon after the update, Alex Roy and two other drivers succeeded at a record-breaking cannonball run, driving from LA to New York in a Tesla Model S in 57 hours and 48 minutes, and they say, autopilot was engaged 96% of the time. In an interview with Wired, Roy says he had a few scares with autopilot as he was driving 90 miles an hour with his hands off the wheel. He explains that when approaching a curve in the road, a trained human driver would aim for the center of the curve as to maintain control of the vehicle. But autopilot followed the lane lines, which he said if his hands weren't there to take control, the car would have taken them off the road and killed them. So there's that. Also, many of the current self-driving cars have trouble driving in bad weather as it mucks up all their sensors. A problem that Google is currently working on fixing with none other than tiny windshield wipers. Adorable. So we can almost touch it, the future that is almost filled with self-driving cars. This sentiment isn't entirely new and surprisingly dates back well before Elon Musk started scolding employees for missing work to witness the birth of their children. Okay, sorry Elon, maybe that didn't actually happen. Let's rewind all the way to the start. 1478. I shit you not. Well before the automobile was even a glimmer in anyone's eyes, Leonardo da Vinci created plans for a self-propelled cart. The cart, which was about a meter square, was powered by coiled springs. Not dissimilar to a spring-powered children's toy. And featured programmable steering and brakes that could be controlled at a distance using a concealed rope. The cart was successfully built for the first time in 2004 and is currently on display at the Institute and Museum of the History of Science in Florence, Italy. The museum's curator says that the cart was designed to operate as a robot and could travel for around 40 meters. For a long time, people thought that this was a precursor to the modern automobile, but recently, researchers have found that it was likely designed for use in a theater setting. Okay, let's fast forward to the 1920s when self-driving cars would really pick up some steam. Now that the car industry was blowing up, the idea of not having to drive those cars was surfacing. On the 10th of August, 1925, the Houdina Radio Control Company drove the Lincurian Wonder, a 26 channeler, down Broadway, New York City. Except there was no driver. Instead, there was an advanced radio unit, an antenna, and a chase car, occupied by the driverless car's actual driver who was controlling it like a modern RC car. This would become a bit of a trend. A year later, on the 8th of December, 1926, the Phantom Motor Car haunted the streets of Milwaukee. Operated by the Akin Motor Company, the car started its own motor, threw in its own clutch, twisted its steering wheel, and may have even sassed a policeman. Though again, all of these actions were performed via radio control. You have to remember that radio was real cool back then, an emerging technology as it were that they tried to shoehorn into many different fields. Even as late as 1939 at the New York World Fair, GM's vision of the future in the 1960s was filled with cars controlled via radio, but propelled by electromagnets buried in the highway. 
obviously. And now we see an enlarged section of 1960s Express Motorway. Safe distance between cars is maintained by automatic radio control. The keynote of this motorway, safety. Safety with increased speed. However, in 1936, a non-radio approach was suggested. Lasers! Sort of. The electric eye automobile would project a concentrated light beam, which would be reflected back at the car's eye via mirrors embedded in the road. These electric eyes are also called photodetectors, which are used in garage door openers today. Basically, they have a feature which projects light into a receiver at the bottom of the door, which, if obstructed, prevents the door from closing. You've seen this. So in theory, if the beam of light being projected by the car was disrupted in a certain way, it would tell the car to turn or brake or whatever. Which sounds pretty cool, but definitely my favorite self-driving car concept comes from the 1950s. At GM's Motorama exhibit in 1956, they presented a film, complete with singing, detailing their plans for a driverless car in the oh-so-distant future of 1976. We gotta slow down. Slow down, so much traffic cuts the flow down. While we're waiting around, singing the blues, turn on the radio for highway news. Route 302, yeah. it's hard to get through. Oh. Hey, I wonder what we'd hear if I'd turn on the switch and we're driving along in 1976. Let's ignore the rocket ship design and the fact that the family somehow didn't age and get right to the meat. They imagined a series of control towers that would route and control cars remotely on special electronic highway lanes. Basically, you call into the tower, tell them your destination, select your preferred route, just like Uber, merge into the center lane electronic control strip, match your speed, and sit back and have ice cream and cigars. The 50s were a different time. Mind if I smoke a cigar? Oh, not with this wonderful air conditioning. By 1960, this system had sort of come to fruition with the testing of the Smart Road. Developed by RCA and GM, the Smart Road was a closed circuit electronic highway with sensors buried in the asphalt that could detect and control vehicles. A year later, four states, including Ohio, Massachusetts, California, and New York, were bidding over a possible contract to build these electronic smart highways. The system never ended up quite taking off as it was too expensive and the tech wasn't really there, but mostly because it was happening around the same time that the interstate highway system in the United States was being completed, and that took priority. The US wasn't alone in this. The UK also had programs for magnetically controlled highway systems, which they estimated would increase highway capacity by 50% and decrease road accidents by 40%. Unfortunately, the project was also deemed too expensive and was canceled in the mid 70s. In the 1980s, DARPA, or the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, funded the ALV, or Autonomous Land Vehicle, which was the first self-driving car which was actually self-driving. It used LIDAR, basically lasers, and computer vision, whatever that means, to travel around 2,000 feet or 600 meters at a whopping around 2 miles or 3 kilometers an hour. The future is here. This really marks the beginning of the modern self-driving car. Gone were the spring coils and the radio controls and the electronic highways, and instead, robotics and sensors and computers took their place. The technology would only really get better from there, and soon you may find yourself behind the wheel of a fully legal self-driving car. Which is great, because of the future and stuff. What do you guys think? Are self-driving cars the future? Of cars, sure. Let me know in the comments. And for the first time ever, I did a live stream edit of this video, or I will be doing one when I edit this video, which for your purposes, I have already done. Anyways, it's for Patreon people. So if you missed the live stream, I will post a link to the live stream in the Patreon activity feed. And if you want to support me on Patreon, you can check out that sweet live stream and other exciting live streams and perks and stuff. And if you support me, it'll be greatly appreciated. I love all of you who give me money. It's lovely. 
Anyways, if you haven't already, be sure to click right on this driverless face to subscribe or at least think about it.